I'm a miniature painter. Of course I'm flawless. Are you too? Just kidding, nobody's perfect. But in this video, I will show you the five most common mistakes I've seen in over a thousand students in all of my workshops. Do you also make one of those five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. I will show you how to recognize that mistakes and together we will fix them. So let's get into it. But first of all, let's buy a new airbrush pistol or maybe the most expensive brush on the market or maybe the fifth red color of a brand you don't even know or maybe the next gadget you use once and never touch again. But let's get serious. I will not tell you what to buy or not to buy. And that brings me to the number one mistake, setting the wrong focus. It is not all about the equipment. Of course, good equipment can help. A nice brush, good paint, we all love it. But for me, the main focus should be on practicing and having fun on your hobby. That's a very easy thing to fix. But let's go to the next one. You don't need the second glaze on your skin tone. And also, the backside of your model, mm, not so important. An edge highlight on that bolter, uh, there is no time for that. Or is it? For me, as a master of shortcuts and over a decade of experience as a professional miniature painter, I can tell you some shortcuts are not worth it. So that's mistake number two, rushing the steps. Sometimes another layer of glaze, another layer of a base coat is very important. Don't skip the very important parts. I know it seems tempting. I know sometimes it seems like, oh, why do I need a second layer of a coat? Why do I need a second layer of a base coat or a glaze? It seems silly to repeat the same process, the same technique over and over again. But don't stop and don't shortcut it until you're very happy with your result. So from mistake two, the shortcuts, we are now coming to a smaller problem that I've seen. This mistake, or better say, a little problem that you might can avoid or adjust a little bit is the volumes. I wouldn't call that a mistake, but it's maybe a little problem that I can fix for you. I see a lot of my students very focusing on the small details, really getting sucked in in that very little items. But for me personally, it is very important to start or better say focus on the bigger volumes because the overall appearance of your model is more important than the very small details. That doesn't mean that the small details and all the little bits aren't important. Of course they are. But it is very important that your entire model looks good, not only the small details. Because the small details and all the work you put in them will not save you from having, for example, a bad color choice. Also, those details will not save you if you have set the highlights and the shadows wrong. So my advice is keep focusing the bigger volumes and the overall miniature before you go into small details, because then you can make sure that you are on the right way. So once you are happy with your entire overall model, you can focus more on the details and all the stuff that makes the most fun. I know that was a short one, let's say a shortcut, but now we come to a big mistake or better say like a big problem for a lot of miniature painters. It's the paint consistency. There are so many brands out there, so many different paints. There are thicker paints, thinner paints, special paints, some washes, glazes. It is very hard to describe. So come with me and I show you my method of thinning my paints. Some paints are more difficult to mix. Sometimes little metal balls can help you with the mixing process. For me, a must-have is a good wet palette. There are a lot of brands, in my opinion, most of them work very fine. Make sure you have enough paint on your wet palette. I see a lot of people struggle with having not enough paint on your palette, so they can't mix them properly. There is no overall recipe for paint mixing. For me, the best ratio is two brushes of paint and one full brush of water. So now you have your thinned paint. But how can you check if that paint is actually good to paint? For me, and also for a lot of other painters, we use our thumbs. I know that sounds a little bit silly, but it really works for us. When the paint on your skin 
is flowing around, maybe going in all the little recesses of your skin, then the paint is probably a little bit too thin and you need a little bit more paint in your mixture. The opposite way is like when you see the color on your skin is very opaque or maybe like a little bit crumbly or very thick, then maybe the paint is too thick. Especially for beginners, there is a little trick and I really like that. You can always use a similar model with a similar priming and then you can paint on it and when it feels right, it's not floating everywhere, then the paint is probably right. It is very hard to fix a too thick color on your model. And also, it is very hard to control a too thin color on your model. So make sure you are very confident with your color before going to the model. Here, you can see a perfect example of a too thick paint. That can cause surface issues like a crumbly surface or maybe you can sometimes also see the brush strokes and you don't want that. And here you can see the worst case scenario. Your surface is floated with too much color and it's not opaque, it's not where you want to have it. Take a Q-tip and try to soak all the wet color before it gets dry. Maybe you can save your model. And here is a perfect example for a very thin and even color with the perfect paint consistency. Of course, that can take two or three coats, but it's worth it, take your time, the base coats are the most important on your model. I know, that's not a new problem, right? But still, a lot of people do it and I want to help you. So keep in mind, Paint consistency is one of the biggest things in miniature painting and try to improve your paint consistency for your paint job. But now we are coming to the last mistake and I wouldn't call it mistake again, but it's an issue and every painter have it. Have you ever quit the model after the first few layers because you were not sure if you're heading in the right direction and you just don't want to waste your time? I have or you weren't sure how to start, or if you are right on the color choice? Have you ever thought that your model in that stage should look way better than it actually do? Do you still find some little errors or maybe some little flaws and you're not ready to deal with it? Then here is the biggest mistake and the most trickiest mistake I've seen on a lot of miniature painter, including me. I painted ten thousands of models as a professional miniature painter for over a decade. But it all comes together to the same thing and that's the lack of confidence. And all I can say to you is we are all sitting in the same boat. We have all the same issues with the lack of confidence. Trust the process. Trust the process of miniature painting. We all have a pile of shame. Of course there are many reasons for that but also sometimes it can be a lack of confidence. My biggest advice I can give to you is finished, not perfect. It is way better to finish a model unperfect than never finish any model. So grab your brush, think about the mistakes you can avoid and become a better painter. But to make it even more simple for you, we've prepared a very easy step-by-step -step tutorial for you. 